Welcome back. You are listening to Nate the Hate on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Be sure to like the video and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you are updated every time we have a new video release. And I'd like to welcome in my co-host, as always, Modern Vintage Gamer. What's going on, Nate? Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure having you here. And despite it only being Tuesday or Wednesday when you're listening to this, this week has had some exciting news, and it pertains to Nintendo as they put out their latest earnings release for their third quarter of the current fiscal year. And Nintendo is on a record-breaking pace with hardware sales of Nintendo Switch, but they're also setting new milestones with software as we've seen record-breaking sales for a few franchises under the Nintendo First Party umbrella. And those include Mario Kart, Pikmin, and Animal Crossing, all which have seen absolutely stellar sales and i should also include hyrule warriors age of calamity has also made its own record and is the best selling musou game of all time which i'm not surprised are you no no definitely not i mean i think we we would have predicted that it would be i mean obviously having the legend of zelda in the game would have you know you would have anyone would have predicted that it was going to be the highest selling Musou game you know eclipsing the um Hyrule Warriors the original one which was which sold pretty well in its own right but this was obviously something that had you know its its connection to the Breath of the Wild you know um world I guess so yeah no definitely no surprises there yeah, Breath of the Wild has definitely helped fuel the interest of Age of Calamity because Breath of the Wild is another absolute monster in terms of sales for the Nintendo Switch. And it was really one of the reasons I would say the platform caught on as quickly as it did. Having Breath of the Wild positioned as a launch game gave the platform core appeal immediately on day one. And that's something that has resonated through the system's lifespan up to this point. And since we are on the topic of hardware, And people are probably wondering, yes, we are going to discuss the comment from Nintendo's president, Furukawa, about new Switch hardware. He did put out a statement concerning that topic, but we'll get into that a little later. Right now, though, let us talk about Nintendo's Switch hardware sales for this fiscal year. Nintendo had originally forecasted that they would sell 19 million Switches, and some people thought... Well, it seems a little low, but then as the pandemic developed and releases like Animal Crossing came to light and Nintendo was just selling absurd amounts of hardware during lockdown and quarantines, that number was very quickly deemed realistic. And Nintendo increased that to 24 million units and record-breaking sales continued. And Nintendo has once again increased their forecast And they are forecasting the Switch will sell 26.5 million units this fiscal year. So that will bring us till the end of March. So we are looking at Nintendo to sell an additional 2.5 million units between January and the end of March. And that goal is going to be easily realized for one key reason. And that is Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. And Mm -hmm. Japan has already had stronger sales in Q4 than what it was having in Q4 of last year. So that figure, they'll likely eclipse it. They could potentially sell 27 million pieces of hardware this fiscal year. And I'm gonna give this a little reference. The peak year for the Nintendo Wii, which was fiscal year of 2008, was 25.95 million units. Now, we all know how strong sales were for the Nintendo Wii. It was a record-breaking piece of hardware. It died very quickly. It was explosive sales, and then they petered out rather fast. But I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to compare it to the Nintendo DS. Now, the Switch isn't going to catch the DS best years. The DS best year was fiscal year 2008, where it sold 31 0.18 million pieces of hardware. So 2008 was a banner year for Nintendo. Just between the DS and the Wii, Nintendo had sold 
57 million pieces of hardware. Jeez. And that's, I mean, that's mind blowing when you look at it that way. But the DS in fiscal year 2009 sold 27.1 million pieces of hardware. And, you know, there's a possibility. I'm not going to say it is going to achieve it, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo with the Switch for this fiscal year eclipses that DS number. There's a chance, you know, that they could do that. And I think, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of strong software that they're going to have as a part of that. I think, you know, they're they're feeling very confident about the numbers this year and and why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's going to be a massive year for them. We've talked about in, you know, in previous episodes, the there's a lot of anniversaries this year. We do expect big things from Nintendo. And we're not even talking about new hardware at this point. We're talking about what they currently have and what we think they're going to announce over the next few months. We expect a lot of big, big titles to get announced this year. Not necessarily all of them are coming out this year, but we expect announcements this year that will get those sales numbers and those forecasts and predictions where Nintendo expects them to be. So yeah, I mean, there is a chance there is a chance that that it could it could actually beat the DS. I mean, it's the Switch is definitely outperforming, I would say, most people's expectations. And when we compare the Nintendo Switch hardware sales after 46 mo- months on market, it's 12 million units ahead of the PlayStation 4 at the exact same, you know, time window of 46 months. It is almost 10 million units higher than the PlayStation 2, which was at 69.5 million units. The only system it's trailing in terms of home consoles is the Wii, which was at 75 million. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, it's ahead of the Wii, which was at 75 million. So it's outpacing a lot of the best-selling hardware of all time. But the discrepancy between these figures is that the Switch did come out in March. Those other platforms came out on holidays. So you could argue that potentially this means the Switch is actually performing better overall than those platforms. But as these months comparisons, you know, continue moving forward, those platforms are going to have holiday holidays factored in where the Switch won't have those in yet. So some of the so like the we could take a lead at another point. Mm-hmm. But we're still looking at a platform that in just 46 months is just shy of 80 million worldwide sales. And that's really nothing short of astonishing, especially when you look at Nintendo's hardware history. This is the successor to the Wii U, which sold abysmally poor. Was it like 15, talking, 15 million? I don't even something like that right check the exact figures but it was it's terrible yeah i mean they they lost so much market share going from the wii to the wii u so the wii u sold 13.56 million the wii is 101.63 million and now the switch is just shy of 80 million so we're looking at the very very realistic possibility that the switch will pass the Wii this time next year. Yeah, it it seems like it's on it's on the right trajectory to do so. Like last year we we were talking about this, I remember, and we felt like it would come close, but maybe maybe it would just kind of fall behind. But I mean yeah, you, you you have to just acknowledge that the you know last year for Nintendo was was a a massive year for them against you know adversity and and COVID and everything. They made it all work, and you have to give them a lot of credit for it. And I think you're right. I think it will. It, it is on trajectory to surpass the Wii. The numbers are in the right place, and. Like I said, man, this this could be an even bigger year for them. I mean, we've got just talk about so many big releases that that will be announced, and I think I'm not saying all of them will be announced, but I think a lot of them will be. Um, we're talking, you know, we, we've heard 
Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. We've heard anniversary collections. We've heard stuff about Pokemon. Uh, there's there's new there's new you know limited edition Switch hardware that's coming out. Monster Hunter and the Mario um, Switch as well. I mean, mm-hmm. this is this is that perfect storm again where they they will actually make um you know tons of sales on this stuff and i think yeah i think by this time next year i would expect it to be right there with the wii no doubt yeah i mean right now the only platform in nintendo's history that the switch is lagging behind is the nintendo ds which after 46 months was at 83 million sales so it's just about 4 million discrepancy we're talking about here but the nintendo ds had that blue ocean effect it appealed to core gamers but also had vast casual appeal with titles like nintendogs brain age brain training and that's a market that really hasn't returned to gaming in that massive wave a lot of them have now gamed on their phones and mobile devices but the switch has been able to appeal to that market to a certain degree but it has also been able to lure in that core gamer yeah. who wants to play titles like the witcher 3 or doom eternal and nintendo has been able to revitalize interest in their brand with the switch and i'd say it was all thanks to breath of the wild being a launch game but also due to the hybrid factor of the hardware itself yeah absolutely absolutely right i mean the the other thing about the ds is obviously in 2008 you said that would have been the ds the ds Lite, and the dsi do we include all three of those yes yeah so and the dsi by itself didn't really sell that much but just i guess having those options available um those different price points available to you you know really made it it was almost Mm -hmm. like you you had to buy ds like there was no reason not to because they had this spread of different systems and and different prices that you would pay for them and i think Mm -hmm. it was a very smart move and um i know that you know we're going to talk about hardware as well later on but i think nintendo already have part of that with the switch Lite, but you know i think I, I do think you know there's there's going to be um you know more to come as far as hardware is concerned going forward now going forward since we'll get into the idea of a revision further down the line of this episode but we do have the switch light and we have the og hybrid switch mm-hmm. one is always going to wonder is the switch going to catch or surpass the lifetime sales of the ds and i mean my immediate thought is no i don't think so but yeah, it, you know it, uh, you know it, it's it's one of those things though like this year really could shape you know if that's if that's going to happen or not like i feel like this is nintendo's most important year for the switch because there's just so much that we think is going to happen this year um and it could well be you know ha- how they they come out of a a covid year um and how they keep that momentum going i think i think they understand that and i think they also have a lot of good product that they're they're going to show us so yeah i mean it's 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 one of those hindsight is 2020 type things but i would say this time next year we'll we'll know pretty Com- comfortably if that if that's going to be true but at this point you would probably say it doesn't look like it's going to happen the, the trajectory is just a little little less than what it needs to be yeah you'd say the switch sales are a little sh- they're shallowing up compared to where you'd want them if you wanted to do the direct comparison to the nintendo ds because the nintendo ds sold 154 million pieces of hardware it sold just shy of a billion pieces of software and that system was doing playstation 2 type levels of software and hardware sales and it was a different industry Mm -hmm. going back a decade plus ago and i think that makes the switch's performance and to that matter even the playstation 4 performance really admirable to see two platforms of the same generation cross 100 million sales is astonishing and one conversation i do see a lot with analysts and even game developers is how much is the industry itself growing are we reaching a new audience of gamer 
or are we consistently catering to the same 300 million base? And I look at this data and say, it is growing. You do have to acknowledge there is a considerable amount of people who reaching adulthood who simply no longer game. They're not buying hardware. They're not buying these new platforms. But the youth is still very engaged in this. And I've seen individuals I know on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and such, make some pretty outlandish claims that hardware, as far as dedicated systems go, it will be this will be the last generation of that because they don't think the youth market is engaged. And I'd say this is evidence that that is inaccurate. The youth market is engaged. It may not be as engaged as when you and I were children, but we have to understand that the gaming industry has evolved a lot. I'd say in the last 15 years, when gaming with the N64, PlayStation 1, it was a children's toy. Now, it still is a children's toy, but it was a youth market. You could tell with the ridiculous edgy commercials that they used to you know, see or the magazine ads, it's evolved. It's now becoming mainstream. And that's why we have titles like The Last of Us from Naughty Dog, or we see that yearly release of Call of Duty is that they're catering to that 18 to 35 market now more than ever before. And as the industry grows up, you know, so do the games, but Nintendo has been consistent. They're that constant, we make games for everyone company, and the Switch encapsulates that belief system, I think, remarkably well. What do you think about the 80 million or just shy of 80 million number? Was that a surprise to you? Because I, I, I kind of felt like, um, I kind of felt like 80 million was what they were going to hit, but there was a lot of talk that maybe at the end of last year, the numbers had dipped a little bit. Plus there were shortages as well for people that did want to get a switch. So it seems like that number was a little higher than expected. What, what, What do you think about, about the number and, and was it a surprise? Them not hitting 80 million was a surprise to me mm-hmm. only because we saw all those record breaking sales throughout the 2020 calendar year. And they're still having a record breaking year, as we mentioned earlier. They will likely sell 27 million units, even though they're only forecasting 26 and a half. And that is an amazing year for any hardware. I thought they would have eclipsed 80 million just due to all that momentum they had built up over the course of 2020. But as you mentioned, we did hear the reports of shortages in Japan, some in Europe. And when we looked at the NPD for North America, we were seeing that October was enormously strong. I believe some of the data suggested Nintendo sold in the area of 600,000 units in the month of October. And then when we transitioned into November, the NPD came out and said, well, it was more or less flat compared to last year. And it was, well, we know supply may have been an issue. And we know that December was also pretty flat. And by being flat, it still means Nintendo moved over a million units in those months. But I think some, I mean, I expected them to move a little more than what they had moved in 2019, simply due to the fact that you still had the Animal Crossing momentum you just released Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. And I would have expected that to move a little more hardware, Yeah, but you didn't have a, a holiday release. 2019 had Pokemon Sword and Shield. This year had Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion. And it's clear that Age of Calamity simply wasn't enough to be a holiday game on its own. You needed another bigger release and Nintendo didn't have it. Pikmin 3, it sold well when it came out towards the end of the year, but that I don't think anyone would view that as a holiday game. So I'd say I was only disappointed that it didn't hit 80 million because it looked like that pacing for the platform was so strong going into the holiday. You would have expected them to have record-breaking numbers in either November or December. And to see that not happen, you just kind of say, oh, wow, it's, it's surprising. Mm-hmm. But like as we said they're having a record breaking year. So it's not to take away from the achievements they had. It's kind of like watching, you know, a soccer player who's out on the field and they're having hat trick after hat trick after hat trick. And then it comes to the championship game and they only scored two goals. Yeah. 
like oh you're not talking about like, Lionel Messi are you no I would I would have been talking about Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> Messi Messi can't perform on the international stage <laughs> We probably and just we, we probably just upset some of the viewers now that you said that. Yeah, we brought up Messi and Ronaldo in the discussion. What were we thinking? Were there any um were there any other surprises that that you kind of saw in this um in this announcement that just made you think, wow, that was something I didn't really expect to see? Uh in terms of hardware, no. Software though, yes. This Pokemon Sword and Shield is the first Pokemon game since Pokemon Gold yeah. to sell 20 million units. That's that's crazy. I'm looking at the numbers now. That is that's astounding just to see that that's happened. Like, yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield, despite all the online boycotts, has sold over 20 million copies. We have Breath of the Wild, over 21 million copies. Animal Crossing. A game that came out less than a year ago has sold 31 million copies. Wow. That's crazy. And then obviously Mario Kart just continues to dominate with 33 million. When is that? that I mean, why why even make another Mario Kart game at this point? Just let, <laughs> let that game define the Switch. There's no reason to make another one. We've heard... Maybe Nintendo should bring out Mario Kart 9. Why? Why cannibalize Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? It is just selling gangbusters and it continue and it will continue to as long as people buy as long as there is an audience that buy Nintendo Switch systems, those people are going to buy a copy of Mario Kart. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the thing. The game is so potent in sales potential. Just slap on some DLC and we've said it numerous times. Make DLC for this game, you will sell probably to even if it's 30 percent of the install base it's 10 million copies of dlc yeah a lot of dlc and i believe mario kart 8 when we take the wii u version plus deluxe is now the best-selling mario kart game of all time yeah and that continues for pikmin 3 pikmin 3 deluxe is the best-selling pikmin game of all time and I don't know if we can say this is purely due to the low sales of Pikmin as a franchise, mm -hmm. or if you'd really look at it more in the case of whatever comes out on the Switch in terms of Nintendo published games simply sells gangbusters. Yeah, it almost sold 2 million, right? So 1.94 million is what I'm seeing uh -huh. here. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't think anyone expected it to sell that many units overall. No, I mean, I loved Pikmin 3 on the Wii U. I did not pick up Pikmin 3 Deluxe only because it was it's a game I've played. I've loved it. I didn't want to buy it for $60. But I'm, I'm glad to see it find the success. And Japan, Japan made up almost 50% of these sales. Japan really latched on to Pikmin 3 this time around, mm -hmm. which is great. It's a fantastic game. I'm glad more people are finding that opportunity to play it on this platform. And then we have Clubhouse Games. Yes, my game of the year from last year, two point six oh, million. Yeah, that's that is a phenomenal number of sales for that type of game. I mean, and it is fantastic. It was my only thing with that game is I wish it had released a couple of months earlier because it was the perfect quarantine game. Absolutely, I agree. I mean, it was released. <laughs> you know, the, the timing was fine, but they could have really dialed it in better, I think. But I mean, ultimately. It still was very successful for them uh, in Japan. It sold a million, and in uh, overseas, it sold another one point six. So, I mean, very, very high numbers there. Just unbelievable. I mean, it all just goes back to, you know, people want to play video games. If if you're stuck yep. at home and you want um, an escape from the world as we know it, with all the bad stuff that was happening last year, yep. you know, playing video games is one of those ways to do it and the switch really makes it very very easy for anyone to jump in and start playing these games and i think that's what you're seeing here with you know uh -huh. with these with these really high numbers i guess the other one the one that just kind of you know makes me just wonder how this happened is super mario uh -huh. u deluxe at almost 10 million it uh it just continues to sell you know 
I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a great game. It, don't get me. I'm not taking anything away from that game. It's just, it's one of those games that you just wonder, where does this fit in the landscape of the Nintendo Switch? But you can't argue with hard numbers. People do like that game and have bought, bought many copies of it. Yeah, and the crazy thing about that figure of nearly 10 million is that just in the last quarter, so we're saying October 1st until the end of December, New, so, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe sold 1.5 million copies. Think about that. In those three months, this game, well, to say for the average number, 500,000 copies a month. Yeah. There are brand new releases that would love to sell 1.5 million copies in three months. And this is a game that came out yeah. many months ago. It's been, and it is selling millions of copies. And that's when you look at these sale figures, you see that strength of Nintendo's evergreen roster of software. Like in just this last quarter, so again, October until the end of December, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and I understand it was bundled with some of the Black Friday hardware sold in America, mm-hmm. it sold nearly four and a half million copies. This is a game that came out launch year of 2017 with the Switch. Yeah. Three years later, in the holiday season, it's still selling almost 5 million copies. That is astonishing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing to see that. Like, and, everything everything on this list, the first party titles, is a success story for them. You yeah. Know, some some and, obviously have outperformed others, but at mm-hmm. the end of the day, yeah, this is um, a very, very good spreadsheet to... to to take to your uh, board members and investors and say, look, this is what we've done, you know? Yeah, and one title that definitely benefited from the pandemic, as morbid as that sounds, was Nintendo's JRPG fitness game, yep. Ring Fit Adventure, that has now exceeded sales of 8.6 million units worldwide, and it sold 2.8 million units in this last quarter that's crazy and, i mean you could barely find one of those ring fits for a, for a, like yeah. for about six months last year i want to say yep it was selling out everywhere prices i remember when china first went to quarantine they were buying ring fits for like three four hundred dollars yeah that's amazing to see that type of game sell these type of you know amount. yeah it's nothing compared to we fit we fit was a phenomenon for its time but ring fit adventure where it's actually a good game on top of being a nice little mm-hmm. in-house exercise routine, almost selling 10 million units is, I mean, if I'm Nintendo, I'm looking at it and I say, we have to incorporate this ring into something else. We have to continue this because this is these are really good sales. And I have to bring up this game as much as I don't want to. <laughs> I have to say it. New, okay, Super Mario 3D All-Stars has sold 8.32 million units from its September launch to the end of December. It sold over 3 million units from October to the end of the year. It will no longer be hosted on the eShop or at retail shelves starting on April 1st. All I see here, fantastic number, but all I see is failed potential. Yeah, it's... It's hard to really, well, how do you, what do you say to this? Like it, it is gonna go away. And honestly, it's probably gonna go away forever, right? But here's the thing. Anyone that wanted a copy of it already has a copy of the game based on the numbers that we're seeing. So what does that really mean? You know, other than maybe in five years, you know, people start asking questions about it again. It is um, it is very sad that it is going to go away. And look, people say, you know, will it will it reappear digitally? I don't think so. I think I think Nintendo left ample time. And and to their credit, you know, they didn't they didn't um, only produce you know two million copies of this game and and made people try to fend for themselves and try to get it. I mean, clearly they produce enough stock so everyone that wanted the game could get it. But I also am very surprised at that number as well, 8.3 million. I I kind of felt like maybe this was a 5 million seller, Nate. But uh, again, it's just exceeded all expectations. And it also, 
you know, shows people out there that are listening to me that I have no idea about how to predict <laughs> software sales. And I never, I was never good at it in the first place, but um, really good numbers overall though. Yeah, it's a great number for 3D All-Stars. But when I look at that chart and just all these, all these titles that we're seeing explosive sales during this holiday season, and these games are two, three years old, I just look at that 3D All-Stars figure and say, this could have been more. You could have yeah. maybe doubled these sales if you allowed it to remain on shelves. And the fact that they didn't come out this earnings and say, we have retracted our stance, we are going to keep 3D All-Stars on shelves, mm -hmm. means they're not going to backtrack on it. That is 100% their intent. And Do you think, I though, that there, there will be a surge of buying before March 31st yeah. and that I, number will you know potentially hit maybe 10 to 12 million yeah I could see it definitely hitting 10 million between 10 and 12 million I think there will be a surge I think you're going to see collectors buy up as many copies as they can right before that cutoff date because they're going to hope to you know sell them they're going to resell them for profit but as you mentioned earlier I think a lot of the people who wanted this game have likely purchased it yeah. it's going to be more of an impact of those who are waiting for the switch revision or they simply didn't buy a switch this year due to pandemic effects mm -hmm. where they didn't have the extra cash to buy a switch it's going to be them who moving into 2021 are going to say you know i would have loved to buy that game and you know you could find it probably used at, a, at some store and you know there will be those options and as I've said before with this game, I'm okay with them limiting the retail supply. I'm just not okay that you're pulling a digital version as well. There's just no reason to pull a digital release of this nature. It should be available at least on there because I should have the option of buying this game in some form new for that at least a year. And I know a lot of retail games that are out there, they make new prints for, I'll say, the first 12 months depending on the game and the publisher size, and then it becomes more difficult to find. This game barely had six months of mm -hmm. shelf time. What do you think, and that's, what do you think um, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is going to... What, 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 what trajectory do you think that's going to take? 10 million plus? Lifetime, I'd say, yeah, 10 million plus. I would say launch month of February worldwide sales i'd put it in the area of three million yeah yeah i i think that's that's fair it, it the the kind of the hype for the game right now the preview hype is pretty big uh -huh. um yeah I, I would put it that what about um new pokemon snap pokemon snap is a tough one to gauge because I'd have, almost would have to reference what the original pokemon snap sold mm. to come up with a better idea of what new pokemon snap would move pokemon is at an all-time high in terms of interest it feels yep. you have older individuals like myself who grew up with pokemon when it first came out 25 years ago you have a legion of youth who are really invested into pokemon we see the surge of interest with the pokemon trading card game we just saw 20 million sales with sword and shield so New Pokemon Snap definitely has great potential, but because of the genre and just nature of the game itself, an on-rails camera picture-taking game, it has a little more limited appeal, but I could easily see it selling... I'll put it in the area of 8 to 10 million by the end of 2021. Yeah, I think so too. And... Obviously, there's more to come from Pokemon this year as well, so it it could mm -hmm. easily get get higher than that. But I, I think eight to ten million is a good is a good number and a good target, and it's probably what Nintendo is looking at as well. Yeah, Pokemon is a really tough thing because I'm sure a lot of people thought the Detective Pikachu movie would have done a billion dollars worldwide, yeah. and it didn't. So sometimes. Pokemon as a brand is highly popular, but it doesn't necessarily trickle down to every product release. So new Pokemon Snap is probably one of those cases where it, it's going to sell well. It's going to be profitable. It'll be an enjoyable game. 
it's just not going to be an explosive, yeah. you know, 15, 20 million seller for them, which it doesn't have to be. It's a niche product. I mean, really, it's it's House of the Dead without shooting. It's a light gun game with a camera. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a good way, it's a good way to, uh, to, to put it, but, but I agree with you. I mean, I, I love the original game on the N64. It was one of my favorite games, but I also have to remember back then, we didn't see 3D Pokemon. We played them on our Game Boy. So when games like Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Snap came out, it was, I got to see Pikachu in 3D. I need to see Charizard in 3D. Mm -hmm. It had that hype and allure to it that the modern generation, they don't have that curiosity. They have their HD Pokemon with Let's Go and Sword and Shield. So there's nothing new, and I put that in air quotes, about Pokemon Snap in the sense of what we had 25 years ago. Yeah. That it's not, you know, it's not being translated to today's modern market. So I'm still excited for it. Hopefully it delivers. I want to take pictures of various Pokemon. And now, are there any other sales figures that stood out to you as like, wow, this is just surprising or disappointing? Not really. I mean, I think in general, everything was higher than I expected. Um, and again, just credit to Nintendo. They've they've had a, a stellar fiscal year and I think surpassing all expectations, theirs and ours. And honestly, I mean, you know, you, you, there was some, some moments last year where you kind of felt like maybe they had lost some momentum. But I mean, looking at this, they, they knew exactly how you know how to how to proceed with everything and they move the right chess pieces in the right place and and this is where we are so yeah you, you really you really now we have to look forward to this year and and, and everything and, and again i think they have some work to do to continue that momentum but i do think that they will you know going forward that's actually a good point because you myself and we had jeff grubb on a few times to discuss it and when we looked at Nintendo's marketing momentum for 2020, especially in the way they were communicating their releases, we had expressed concern because it went from Animal Crossing to Clubhouse Games to Paper Mario, which sold over 3 million copies so far, a very well-received Paper Mario game. But it was always this constant lull. Yeah, And it felt like... Nintendo, you're selling record-breaking hardware. We're not denying that. But you're kind of leaving the fans a little hungry of what's next. And all of a sudden, it felt like they went into gear around August. And they said, we have Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity coming up. Here's the 3D All-Stars collection. Here's new Pokemon DLC. And it's kind of like, okay, you guys finally communicated us. And you gained a lot of forward momentum but it is interesting when you look back at that year and say this was a company who really didn't put out all that much in terms of software. We had the Xenoblade Definitive Edition release, but it was very sporadic and no, what I would classify as a major AAA must have release, really outside of Animal Crossing for the majority of 2020, but it didn't matter. They went on to sell 24 potentially 27 million pieces of hardware which really just shows that yes you do need consistent software to keep the base engaged but when you're trying to bring in new consumers it's all about that evergreen library and based on the sales chart nintendo does this better than anyone in the business yep absolutely and now we will pivot to a matter that got a lot of attention. Where's my Switch Pro, Nate? Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked because someone asked Nintendo's president, Furukawa, exactly that. And had an answer. The question to them was posed as new model this year? And Nintendo had the perfect answer to that. Not planning to make an announcement anytime soon as we have the Mario version in February and the Monster Hunter version in March. And they're right. They yep. do have two new hardware SKUs coming out in the next two consecutive months. We have the red Mario Switch with the black 
kickstand, why it's not red or green or blue, we will never know. And then we have the very, I would say, lovely designed Monster Hunter Switch coming out to launch alongside Monster Hunter Rise. And this was something that last year we had wondered, why didn't Nintendo or Capcom announce a Monster Hunter Switch? Because we've seen it almost every time Monster Hunter is on a Nintendo platform. For some reason, they just waited a while. Even the Mario bundle. This was probably something that would have came out last holiday had 3D World remained on track with its October release. But due to COVID and numerous delays, they bumped it until early this year. And the wording of this answer is in stark contrast to when Nintendo came out last year and said, no, we have no new hardware this year. Yeah. This time, any time soon. Yeah. Different different wording. And, do, you know, I mean, the way that I'm, I'm seeing this is, you're right, there are two new SKUs coming out, the two new limited edition Switches. Why would you discuss a Switch Pro and kind of disturb disturb the roadmap of of those two SKUs. So I think the way that I see this going is um, there will be a Switch revision announcement um, not anytime soon. Could mean six months from now. Could mean 12 mm-hmm. months from now. Could be next year. We don't know. But um, I think the message there is not right now, but you know, when when it's time, we will we will announce it. Yeah, my read on it is pretty much exactly that. It's we don't have an announcement anytime soon, and all that means is we want to finish our current fiscal year. We have two hardware bundles coming still this fiscal year. We have Mario in February. We have Monster Hunter in March. Let us finish the fiscal year. Let these bundles sell, and if we want to communicate our plans of new hardware for our next fiscal year, you'll have to wait until April 1st. Now, I'm not saying the Switch Pro or Revision is going to be announced on April 1st. That's just the first day of possibility. We likely won't hear of this revision. You can call it the Super Switch, whatever you want. I'd say the earliest, June. Yeah. And that's the earliest I would expect. And I'm only saying June because I'm going to operate under the idea that Nintendo will have an E3 week direct. It's not related to E3. It's just the timing. And that's when they would introduce plans of a revision. They could potentially wait until their first earnings report for their upcoming fiscal year, because they they do have to give us their hardware forecast. So that could give us a general idea of if they are planning to introduce new hardware for the fiscal year. Hopefully, we will have a better idea of when Breath of the Wild 2 launches. I fully anticipate that Breath of the Wild 2 will be leveraged as a launch title for the revision. We saw Nintendo do this before with the Switch Lite and Link's Awakening and Majora's Mask 3D and the new 3DS. This isn't uncommon for them to launch a revision with a Zelda title. What's bigger than Breath of the Wild 2? Yeah, I agree. Nothing. The question then is, is it March of 2022? Or is it, you know, do you think there is still a chance that's coming out this year? I believe it will be this year. I believe it would be holiday. I know I've seen some speculation suggesting maybe it would be September, but I think it would be Nintendo's quarter three, which would be October to December. It just, it fits their pattern, though, yes, we did see the light launch in September. That is, you know, it's always an exception to the rule. I believe they would want to position this revision a little closer to holiday. And it's just now a matter of when is it introduced. I won't dismiss the idea that it could potentially slip into 2022. Mm. It's February. A lot of things can change in the next coming months in terms of production supplies. Nintendo themselves have come out and said they are some shortages for supplies in their supply chains for Switch. This could go as far to Switch Pro production. We know Microsoft and Sony 
are having problems producing and manufacturing PlayStation 5 and the Series S and X. Nintendo could be faced with similar problems and they might say, we don't have enough supply to launch this revision. We'll delay it three months. This will be something that they'll figure out once they actually hit production lines and they can see what the output levels will be. They're not at that point yet. So that's something we have to wait on in the coming months. There will be there will be numerous leaks leading up to the actual announcement. We've had some information come out, but nothing significant enough to indicate that manufacturing has begun on product lines that could start as soon as March, depending on what they are targeting for a release window. But yeah, I don't expect Nintendo to officially discuss a revision for the 2021 calendar year until early summer because when you think of the new 3ds i believe that was introduced the week after e3 yep that's right and they denied it at e3 (laughs) they they did (laughs) i mean this could this could be history repeating itself um i do this one's really hard to to predict i mean everything's hard to predict of course um but this is why i say that i think this is nintendo's biggest year because there is a a possibility a good possibility of new hardware but on the flip side it's nintendo you never really know what the next move is for them and it seems like this year is going to be pretty pretty well stacked for them regardless so i there's also this doubt in my mind that maybe they're holding holding a new revision off till maybe early next year. I mentioned mm-hmm. March, R- simply because I think they're going to have a lot going on this year, and they don't necessarily want to disturb the landscape with existing Switch owners. And mm-hmm. I think maybe they just want a, a a window of time where they can really market this this better. But hey. You could be you could be right. I mean, they, the other thing is they could announce the Switch this year, but actually ship it out, you know, early next year. I mean, there's also that possibility as well. Get people excited for new hardware as well. So um, definitely lots of lots of possibilities to consider. Yeah, I would definitely subscribe to the idea that it will be announced this year, but do leave the option of a potential launch early next year. I mean, I would favor launching this year for one key reason, Mm -hmm. and it would just be the case of, I'm Nintendo, I know my Switch is looking outdated. I want to launch this revision with DLSS, 4K capabilities, and it's going to be before, ideally, Sony and Microsoft really start to hit their groove. Yeah. So if I can have this platform out, and I'm showing these games that are at 4K, thanks to DLSS, I now position my little hybrid console as something way better than it really is. I can compete with them at least in an illusionary way. And that could be big for them because we know Microsoft's big release this year, aside from Flight Simulator, Mm -hmm. is going to be Halo Infinite. But if I'm Nintendo, or I'll even go with Sony, you're going to have God of War probably launch this holiday if it doesn't face a delay. And if it's not God of War, it'd be Horizon Forbidden West. If I'm Nintendo and I can launch brand new hardware, DLSS, 4K capabilities, Breath of the Wild 2, I'm standing right next to those two. I don't have to fear those two. I look strong. And that would be my argument for Nintendo to make this year. They don't have to, but I think it would be in their interest to do so. And when we read that statement of anytime soon, Yeah, it's not coming in the next six to seven weeks. We're looking more in the case of the next three to five months. Right. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, I think I think it's definitely second half of this year um, and Uh beyond. I don't think it's anytime soon. Yes, I would agree with that. And now we're going to move into some of our Streamlab questions for the week. We had a five dollar donation from Luke who writes. I have been looking at getting a retro handheld console to play 3DS, PSP, and various other backup games on one machine. Should I try one of those Chinese handhelds being hawked by YouTubers or stick with a used 3DS or Vita? Much love and thank you. Well, I think I I would (laughs) not get a Chinese handheld because... um... 
the experience that you'll have will be subpar and only because usually you know they'll they'll do one 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 or two things really well but if you want to play 3ds and psp games unfortunately there's not going to be one device that will give that to you um, at least on a handheld so yes i would just say stick with your um your 3ds and your vita which does play psp games every single one of them and you should be uh, good to go perfect answer <laughs> We then had a dollar donation from Alejandro HDZ. Right, I'd like to mention a very interesting pricing. I live in Mexico and things have a very odd pricing. Xbox and PlayStation software usually cost the same as the US, but Nintendo software costs 50% more. That means a $60 game costs $90 here. Whoa. Love the content. Whew. That's brutal. Um I I mean I don't know why that that would be the case but yeah is is that the Nintendo tax we keep hearing about I I'm not even sure like why that would happen um but I do feel for you um if if you know that's what you're paying for uh, some of these games that's uh that's that's a pretty steep price increase that is a steep price increase hopefully if you're able to you can connect to the US eShop and save yourself a little bit of money or maybe you're able to find some u.s copies being sold closer to 60 dollars in your area of mexico because that is yeah that is way too much money for a video game i'm sorry absolutely yeah i mean that would be something that i would second second guess or you know question whether i should buy yeah. buy some of these games there'd definitely be some buyer's remorse involved as well on some of them absolutely <laughs> Then had a dollar donation from Jackie G wrote, is there a game that has been at the top of your backlog for years that you've always insisted you'll play eventually? <laughs> Love the content as always and keep up the good work. I, I've got one. I want to hear yours first though, Nate. Oh man. I think the one game I always say I'll go back to and I never have is the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. <laughs> I actually played and finished that one. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I I bought the game when I got my 360 and I was like, this game looks awesome. I can't wait to play it. I fought the rat at the beginning in the dungeon. It killed me one time. I eventually killed it. And I was just like, this game is stupid. I'm getting killed by like squirrels. And I was like, but I want to love it. I love Skyrim. Skyrim is like one of my favorite Western RPGs. And I'm like, I'm going to go back to Oblivion. I even bought the collector's edition. It came with a coin and a map and everything. Yeah. And as soon as I started off, I'm like, I still hate you, but one day I will beat that game. Mine is, it's not, doesn't go that far back, um, <laughs> but mine would be Shenmue 3. So I Ooh. I got the game when it came out, and as someone that played the first two and enjoyed the first two, I'm not a, I'm not a Shenmue super fan. I did want to play through the third one and get, you know, see where the story was going to take us. Mm -hmm. But I got to say, it's still in the shrink wrap and maybe i'll get around to playing it um but i've never have you know you just reminded me i never finished shenmue 2. <laughs> yeah shenmue 2 was actually good um for for its time it hasn't aged particularly well but yeah, I, I just it's one of those games where i was really on on board with the hype train and hmm. yu suzuki was back and and finally <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hear where the story goes and i think part of the reason why I haven't played through the game, not because it's not a good game. I think it's because I heard that it's this is like part three of seven now. There's like four more games that need to be told. So yep. it's like, why, why? So I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Yeah, it, I'll, I'll play it eventually, but I'm not really feeling it right now. Right. It's like 35% of the story is complete now, but it took us <laughs> years to get part three. So it's like, are we, am I ever getting this full story? It feels like reading a song of Ice and Fire from George R. R. Martin at this point. We're just never getting the final yes. conclusion of the series. So that, it, that is true. And I think <laughs> I think that's the reason why I haven't played the game. If If, if part three was truly the conclusion of the story then i probably would have played through it but hearing yeah. hearing that it wasn't the end of the story and there is more to come assuming that there's going to be a publisher that decides that right. they want to fund this thing 
um yeah it, it's kind of just it's kind of lost on me a little bit now yeah there's so much uncertainty as to whether or not you'll get a conclusion so it's hard to become invested in a project that you may never see the story conclude and yeah that's it is tough then had a five dollar donation from skittittles who wrote after last year i'm trying to keep my expectations grounded for how far out nintendo will announce its 2021 lineup now that pokemon snap has been dated do you guys think we could go as late as mid-April before they date their next game. Thanks. Yes. I'm going to say no. I think we're going to get some announcements before April 30th. I think um, I, I think yes, you're right, generally speaking. But if Nintendo did wait that long, I wouldn't be surprised by it at all. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But I think we'll get information starting in the second half of february or even early march we'll start to hear them begin a rollout because we know the pokemon anniversary is in february we'll probably be hearing a lot of those plans towards the second half of the month it's also zelda's anniversary month or birthday month so i wouldn't be surprised if they date maybe just the zelda collection in february maybe position that as a first half april release or early may release type of situation i'm not saying those are the release dates for the projects this is pure speculation but I could see them begin to relay information of that sort probably before the conclusion of this fiscal year. I'd be surprised if we didn't get better guidance yeah. as to where 2021 is going to bring us. Because as we've said, they have the potential of a lot of software this year and they have to communicate with us sooner rather than later. And that was the final Streamlabs question for this episode. If you'd like to support the channel, we have a Streamlabs link in our description on YouTube below. You can donate any dollar amount you wish, ask a question, we will answer it at the end of the episode, donate $100 or more, and we will dedicate dedicate the episode to you. As for everyone who donated this episode, thank you for your generosity and continued support. I'd like to thank Modern Vintage Gamer for joining me as always. Thank you for having me on night, it's always a pleasure. Hopefully everyone listening enjoyed today's topic. If you enjoyed the video, give the video a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Let us know your thoughts on the Switch Pro timing and Nintendo's sales in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, continue to embrace the hate.